ticks. If they were to have ticks, it's because they fell to the ground and they were injured and there were ticks on the ground already. But it's not something that you would commonly find in there. Their skin is so dense that it's hard for them to be able to, to, to get into their, their skin. Um, mosquitoes, unfortunately, will get them at, on their noses and the coloepuses on their pads because they're exclusive. They're not dirty animals. As a matter of fact, here in captivity, if we get one from the wild, after about two weeks, the moths will die off, and the moths will actually fly away within hours mm -hmm. of them being in captivity. We don't need to bathe them. The only reason we would bathe them is if they had mange. Yeah. And again, you bathe them, and then you have to do a big treatment. And again, they don't have an odor. No, and when they're in the wild, the, the moss actually helps them smell like vegetation. Mm -hmm. so. This young lady is extremely intelligent in, in really bizarre ways. When she's in, she's really in heat, um, we have about five or six people standing up here. All women. Yeah. She'll look adorably to the woman, yeah. reaching out. However, if there is a man there present, she will literally toss herself out <laughs> at the man. <laughs> yeah, it's hysterical. Maybe she, she smells the testosterone. I don't really know, but why she just actually leans out of her basket. seen her picture in a, in a mirror and stuff to see what she looks like? Yeah. Oh, no, no, she might be a little vain. Yeah. <laughs> we have a dog that looks at himself all the time. Really? Stops there, checks himself out, looks up and down the mirror. I look pretty good, he thinks. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just finished reading a really good book about a, a, a dog. Um, it's called Merle's Door. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic. If you love dogs as much as I do, you have to read that. And Merle, actually did the same thing, full-length mirror. Yes. At yep. first he just looked at it and looked yep. at it, and then he, he finally realized that it was him that he was looking at. So every time he'd come in, he'd go right there and just start staring himself up and down, <laughs> agreeing at how handsome he was. Yeah. <laughs> I told him, she said, come on, help her, go for it, girl. Let them see how cool you do. Ooh. Go on, big girl. Go on. Twirl that thing around. I don't know, I don't know if she's going to go all the way to the top. Now again, sloths aren't lazy. They're slow. Yeah. And again, it's the food that they eat, the metabolism, it takes them, what they eat today, one month to digest that food. Okay? Mm. They're conserving energy, because again, they can't store their own heat, so they're conserving energy that way. And also, it's, in the wild, like I said, fast movement attracts the eye of the predator. Slow movement, yeah. barely able to see. And when she does move, she, she knows precisely where she's going to put her, her, her next limb. It's not a jerky feeling out and everything yeah, like that. She knows. Very calculated. She's very calculated. It's almost like the first form of yoga. That's probably where we got it. Right? Look at that slow movement. Exactly. Four. 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 Downward facing slot. Is that where that came from? Make a good picture of her holding the book. 
bedtime stories. Yeah. Right. I have a picture of my youngest son when he was about three. We had a king uh -huh. that I raised from babyhood, and we ha we we were. You have this good correspondence with the guy that wrote a book about the King of Jews, it was Peter Evers. And we had a picture of Stephen sitting on the, on the bed with the King of Jews on his lap, and Spunky, and Spunky managed to climb on top of the book and look down over the top of the book as it was looking at the... Uh, uh, uh.